My name is Dr. Justin Coulson from happyfamilies.com.au. Trust is the, is the foundation of influence. Anyone who's a leader wants to influence people, and particularly when we're dealing with young people, uh, what we really want to be able to do is help them and influence them as they encounter the various obstacles and challenges that they have in their lives. If they trust us, we will have far more influence over them than if they don't trust us. High trust, high influence, low trust, low influence. So, so I'm talking about trust to the, to the leadership delegates because we hear all about all the other stuff to do with dealing with violence and dealing with dietary issues and dealing with depression and all that kind of stuff and it's so important but ultimately no matter how much knowledge we have if the young person doesn't trust us if we don't have a, a strong foundational relationship then we we really will have limited influence and will therefore have limited capacity to help them You know, it, it's funny, when it comes to trust, we seem to just expect that people will trust us, usually because we trust other people, and, and that's what makes relationships work. But all too often, we fail to consider the ramifications of the way we engage with somebody on the way they might trust us. So if you have a student who's obstinate, if you have a student who's oppositional, or challenging, or disrespectful, the, the typical response to that student or that client or that, that adolescent might be to be angry with them or it might be to come down hard on them or to um, ignore them and walk away from them. But each of those responses undermines trust. That young person looks at us as an adult and says, he doesn't care, she doesn't understand, they're not interested in me, it's always about them and their agenda because they're getting our dismissal or they're getting our disapproval. And those things undermine trust. It's not normal to do what I'm gonna suggest in the leadership session that we should do and can do, but when we do what I'll talk about, which is really turning towards the young person and, and, and understanding them, inviting them to be closer to us, not pushing them away, that's where trust is built, where they see that we actually care about them and recognize that they are a real person with hopes and feelings and desires and challenges rather than just saying, look, I'm the grown-up, you do as I say. Yeah, sure. Research has shown that when there is high trust in, in a work environment, we see a lot less conflict, we see a lot more engagement, we see a lot, a, a lot more cohesion. There's a lot less exclusion and isolation. We see more productivity and we, saw, we, we, we see less absenteeism and staff turnover. Now, if, if we can get that in a work team, I wonder if that might happen as well in our classrooms. When our students trust us, or, or perhaps in a, in a social work setting, when our clients trust us, they're much more likely to be happy to be with us. They're more likely to be integrated into the system that we're trying to create. There are gonna be stronger connections. And with that greater trust and stronger connection comes the opportunity for more influence. In addition to that, there are strong links between trust and well-being. When trust is low and we don't have good relationships around us, well-being suffers. When trust is high and relationships are strong, well-being improves.